Derivatives trading involves substantial risk of loss and is not suitable for all investors. Past performance is not necessarily indicative of future results. So stressful. When the world's on fire. Good God. I can't look at this, guys. Like, my strategy is... You buy it and you hope that you gotta get spotted. Yeah, but we all think you're crazy. You don't fight this. No way. The markets are freaking out and you don't think that anything is wrong? Come back tomorrow and I'll lose it all. It should be fun. Good morning, everybody. I was a little paused there because I was just as the intro was going, I was reading through the headlines and I saw this headline that Ethereum dumps and pumps after leak about SEC chairman to classify Ethereum as a security. <clears throat> I would think that that would move them up. Anyways, here we are. We got Federal Reserve meeting coming up and um, there are some big orders out there, some uh, curious movements in the treasuries but they are polling early this is a real federal reserve meeting that's how you know it's like the big move because they pull all of their liquidity like five minutes before it happens earlier they pull before the news the bigger news it is so let's make sure that we got our news squawk going and everything uh there's not really anything too interesting to report since this morning so uh, i'll leave it at that um We'll make sure that we have Twitter pulled up here so that we can see all of the commentary on it. Block cell. Hey, somebody filled the guy at 08 half. Have fun with that, boys. <laughs> Five thousand contracts just the thirty seconds before the news. I just can't imagine holding 5,000 contracts of something going into the news. What? What? Okay, market is rising off of the initial news. No change. <clears throat> oh, this is this is going to be one of those days, huh? They're going to completely retrace that initial move. Hey, where where's the dot plot? Dot plot. Dot plot. Nick Timmerow says FOMC holds steady. There's a thin median for three cuts in 2024. The core PCE inflation forecast for 2024 was revised up to 2.6 from 2.4 in December. GDP forecast for 2024 was, rev was revised up to 2.1% from 1.4% in December. Okay, so they're still saying three. That is as expected. There were some people hedging for that. That might be why there are some buying. The range chart is on steroids, I bet. Any idea how that indicator that counts your swings in tech is, is called on NinjaTrader 8? Yeah, um, it's called price swing action. And it comes from um, Poncho. Poncho, price swing action. It was posted on the... Uh, what do we call it? Uh, 
sure it is right here. I think I don't think I changed the name of it. I should take that off. Oh, and inventory cost basis. I should remove that too. So you don't get the title up in the upper left. Oh, data pipe is up there. I need to remove that one. That's weird. Yep, it's price action swing. Um, it, it, it come from the futures IO forum, but if you can't find it and you just message me on discord, I would, I would send it over to you. This is it's like one of the most common ninja trader indicators, so. Well, this one is a tough call. When we have like a big move that goes off and then comes all the way back, you know, I, I often like to try and run with that and buy it. But uh, when I look at the volume in the treasuries and so forth, I am not actually seeing that buying. The, um, what I'm seeing from the news suggests to me everything is in line with the expectations. I kind of suspect that we might range here between, let's say, 16 and 8 uh, until the press conference, potentially. That's kind of what it's feeling like to me. Want something? Hmm, hold on. Oh, okay. They deployed something at work. I wanted to check it. Okay, we're good. Yeah, Nexus. Nexus fight. Why did they change the name? I don't understand. Was futures thought io? like too official and they were getting in trouble or something but then like i don't understand the name that they picked i never remember it i always go to futures io <laughs> am i am i the only one in that boat that was like why wow. Let's bring new shell out over here. FOMC. No hike. Thought plot for three hikes by end of 2024 in line with expectations. Markets jumped up big and retraced quickly. Equities. Equities are are seem to be reading this as like game on, huh? Equities seem to be reading this as game on. I'm a little nervous about that one though because, ah, uh, yeah, traders price in additional Fed easing in 2024. Says Financial Juice. Uh, okay. I think that whatever the situation is that we're getting right now could potentially change significantly during the press conference. So we'll see. I like Big Mike. Yeah, generally, he'd be, he's a good guy. I'm, you know, there are some things about that forum that I don't like. I, I'm, I'm not as active over there as I used to be, to be honest. Like one of the things is that you're not really allowed to have like real discussion anytime that people really start to talk and disagree like bob immediately comes in and shuts it down <laughs> and, and then uh you know like they're they're creating a paywall where you put your ninja trader indicators up there and that's like one of the biggest benefits of being on that website but like they don't make any of those indicators like why should i go and put my indicators up on there so that it can just be behind a paywall and you can make money off of it. It's ridiculous. And you don't really get a lot of the 
well, I don't think that I've seen this anywhere. Like a good discussion, people that really know what they're talking about and will like go into studies with you and things like that, right? It's just like a bunch of noobs everywhere for the most part. So when when they switched, I just kind of like I started visiting even less. I should go. It's, it's been like a month. I should go and check. I probably have like private messages or something over there too. Notifications. Unread direct messages. Oh, link link feet fixed. Exclusive Ninja Trader offer. Not interested. Hmm. And that other one is, is the one that I have read, actually. So I don't know why it shows up as a notification. Whatever. Hmm. So they were kind of making that move up like they was going to make the move. But like in the 10 year, the volume is actually net selling. This might be a good spot to turn on the power meter, right? Like, like let me reset the power meter. I'm just going to put it like real close right here because I'm not going to be taking any trades. It seems to me like the sellers that there's actually slightly more sellers, but it's hard to tell. See that? 8K. It's almost 2 to 1. It's almost 2 to 1 selling. Hmm. But they're almost like back into the range, so I don't know if I could trade that. Hmm. Still. My wife went and, and uh, got some lunch and brought me back a burger, and I'm like, I already kind of ate. I might, after this stream, I might go and eat it. I don't know. I didn't eat a ton. But I don't want to eat right now. I want to talk to you guys. Okay, let's read this thing. Still angry about the approval of the spot Bitcoin ETFs, it appears Elizabeth Warren and her cronies are dead set on stopping Americans choosing their own sovereignty, hoping to stomp out the hopes and dreams of a spot Ether ETF by classifying it as a security. Uh, is it is Ethereum a security? Uh, I don't I don't know if it it really is. I I think that they're more like playing cards. To be honest with you. Anyways, yeah, zero hedge is so like they just can't hide their their bias on some of these things. Maybe they do that on purpose. Maybe their audience loves that. I don't know. I don't love it though. The Ethereum Foundation, the Swiss nonprofit organization at the heart of the Ethereum ecosystem, is under investigation by an unnamed state authority, according to the group's website, GitHub Repository. The scope of the investigation and its focus was unknown at press time, according to the GitHub commit dated February 26th, which has been a while now. We have received voluntary inquiry 
from a state authority that included a requirement for confidentiality. Uh, oh yeah, that could, that's usually not good actually. Uh, the investigation comes at a time of change for Ethereum's technology and at a possible inflection point for its native asset, Ethereum, which many American investment companies are seeking to offer as an exchange-traded fund. The Securities and Exchange Commission has slow-walked their efforts despite recently approving a series of Bitcoin ETFs. After the publication of this article, Fortune reported that the SEC is seeking to classify Ethereum as a security, a move that would have major implications for Ethereum, an ETH, an ETF as crypto as a whole. The financial regulator has sent investigative subpoenas to U.S. companies in the past several weeks, according to Fortune's reporting. Previously, the Ethereum Foundation's website contained the following disclosure. The Ethereum Foundation has never been contacted by any agency in the world in a way which requires that contact not be disclosed. Stifling Ethereum will publicly disclose any sort of inquiry from government agencies that falls outside the scope of regular business operations. That footer was removed in the February 26th GitHub commit along with the website's Warrant Canary, according to the changelog. Warrant Canary is some sort of text or visual warning like a colorful bird in the case of the Ethereum Foundation, which some companies include on their websites to indicate they've never been served with government subpoena or document request. Oh, oh, really? Okay. If a government agency does request information, the company may remove the text suggesting they receive the request without explicitly saying so. Yeah. Uh, nevertheless, it seems that the SEC is dead set on slow playing the ETH ETF and Bloomberg's James Starfer and Eric Balakunas have lowered their odds of approval by May 23rd notably. Public sentiment appears to also have fallen, with polymarket odds for Ether's ETFs being approved by the end of May, dwindling to 32%, down from January's 77% odds. It's just a FUD, it could be. Bitcoin appears to have taken it in stride and is slightly higher today. What do I know? I didn't think that they should have approved the original Bitcoin ETFs, let alone a Ethereum ETF. Yeah, you approve Ethereum and all of the tokens that are on on Ethereum, and then you, you start to have some real issues. So I, I don't think that they could just make an ETF. But I really don't think that the government should be uh, sanctioning this nonsense by making ETFs. But I don't know why Zero Hedge said anything about Elizabeth Warren at the top, because none of this had anything to do with Elizabeth Warren. Well, whatever. What else is on Zero Hedge right now? Do we have the uh, interest rate decision? Well, let's read this. Too long didn't read, no change for rates, barely any change in the statement, but big signals from the dot plot with 2024 remaining the same for three rate cuts, but 2025, 26 and beyond all seeing higher rates and less cuts. The 2024 median dot unchanged at three cuts, but composition changed. And while before eight saw 50 basis points or less in cuts, now it's nine. Literally one voter stood between 50 basis points and 75 basis points of cuts in 2024. Oh, really? That kind of paints it, puts it in a slightly different light, don't you think? But yes, you can see there when you look at the dots, that especially when you get a little bit further out, they have shifted a little bit. The neutral rate is higher, they think. Will the treasuries completely retrace that move? I think that they might. It's very curious to me the way that the market reacted to that news initially. They There was the knee-jerk reaction. Seems to have been complete a complete head fake. Just nonsense, you know? But that's Federal Reserve Day. Let's see what happens when Jerome Powell starts talking. Because I, 
I think that there could be some really interesting moves while he's talking. Wow. Poll says less than 30% of New Yorkers happy with city. Half of New Yorkers will flee the city in the next five years as quality of life plummets post-pandemic. Okay, there's the open. S&P 500 seems to be giving it back as well. Now, something I'm noticing, uh, hey, you know what? Probably there is a trade in here for, for this. You know what? I don't really like trading the FOMC day. Like taking that amount of risk is is bad, but I think that you should you should see steepener. And it is happening, and I've just only barely looked at it. Man, are they selling the heck out of the 30 year. So because they're saying that like, oh, the 2024 is not changing too much. But when you go further out, the Federal Reserve sees interest rates staying higher for longer. Which means that that long end of the curve gets slaughtered. Steepening. Very, very extreme steepening. Look at, I mean, look at, uh, can you tell? I don't know if you can really tell very well with that. Now you have to come over here. Look at that. Insane selling volume in ZB and a really strong move up. So I think that I should probably sell the 10 year if I get a good opportunity to. But like right now, it would be like you'd be in it for 10 minutes and then we'd be in the press conference and that's always a mess. So let's, you know, maybe sometimes I have a really, really good reason why I think it's just going to trend all day and I get involved. But I, I think in this situation, I should sit on my hands. There will be plenty of opportunity to trade it tomorrow, I think. Like, I think that you might continue to see a lot of steepening. Let's let's see if we come back over to here, the two and 10. Well, on the two and 10 year chart, the amount of steepening is only just recovering some of the steepening that we've had recently, so.
Unusual Wells. Two hours ago, 75% of the jobs in the U.S. economy added last year were in just three sectors, government, healthcare, and hotels and restaurants. Hotels and restaurants is a category. You don't have to know asks what's up. Well, um, a few things are up. The S&P 500 is up a little bit. Um, gold is up. Gold is definitely up. Gold is definitely up. Copper. Copper. Metals. Metals are up. How about you? <clears throat> Eric Wallerstein tweets, Markets thought the Fed would talk tougher, now lowering interest rate expectations. That that could be, but it seems to me that the change in the yield curve is the bigger mover here at the moment. So, um, spreads can be very, very powerful flows. So when there's a really clear reason for a spread to happen, it, it moves. Let's see here. This statement is not doing anything to prepare anyone for cuts in May, and it is hard to see any path that absent the unemployment rate rising to 4% or higher in the next print. This is a tricky time for monetary policy because both inflation and recession risks have increased. Goal should be to say as little as possible in the presser, just like the statement said very little because they don't really need to decide much for another 12 weeks. Maybe... But they did change their dot blots further out. I mean, I think that there's going to be some discussion about the neutral rate today. And how does the market interpret that discussion? So got, what, five minutes here? It's kind of warm in here today. I might get sleepy. This is one of the more dramatic changes in the yield curve I've seen. I don't know if it's the most, but it seems like it's one of the more dramatic changes in the yield curves I've ever seen. What, 7% of Canadians who owned crypto last year used it to pay a ransom, according to a poll by the Ontario Securities Commission? Oy.
Okay, I guess I should pull the press conference up, huh? YouTube.com slash Federal Reserve. Oh. Press conference. Where can we put the... I, I, I guess we could put it down here. Nah. I'm not liking the way that looks. Uh, that. There we go. Okay, here we go. Turn the music down just slightly. I am, I am feeling sleepy. It's that late afternoon nap is coming on, man. Don't put me to sleep, j Pow. Mm-hmm. Well, that seemed like a hawkish start. Oh, yeah, we need him up. Oh, wait, 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 wait. I didn't turn him on. Sorry. Today, the FOMC decided there to leave our policy interest rate unchanged and to continue to reduce our securities holdings. Our restrictive stance of monetary policy has been putting downward pressure on economic activity and inflation. As labor market tightness has eased and progress on inflation has continued, the risks to achieving our employment and inflation goals are moving into better balance. I will have more to say about monetary policy after briefly reviewing economic developments. <clears throat> Recent indicators suggest that economic activity has been expanding at a solid pace. GDP growth in the fourth quarter of last year came in at 3.2% for 2023 as a whole. GDP expanded 3.1% bolstered by strong consumer demand, as well as improving supply conditions. Activity in the housing sector was subdued over the past year, largely reflecting high mortgage rates. High interest rates also appear to have weighed on business fixed investment. 
In our summary of economic projections, committee participants generally expect GDP growth to slow from last year's pace, with a median projection of 2.1 percent this year and 2 percent over the next two years. Participants generally revised up their growth projections since December, reflecting the strength of incoming data, including data on labor supply. The labor market remains relatively tight, but supply and demand conditions continue to come into better balance. Over the past three months, payroll job gains averaged 265,000 jobs per month. 30-year keeps going. The rate has edged up, but remains low at 3.9%. Strong job creation has been accompanied by an increase in the supply of workers, reflecting increases in participation among individuals aged 25 to 54 years and a continued strong pace of immigration. Nominal wage growth has been easing and job vacancies have declined. Although the jobs to workers gap has narrowed, labor demand still exceeds the supply of available workers. FOMC participants expect the rebalancing in the labor market to continue easing upward pressure on inflation. The median unemployment rate projection in the SCP is 4.0 percent at the end of this year and 4.1 percent at the end of next year. Inflation has eased notably over the past year but remains above our longer run goal of 2 percent. Estimates based on the consumer price There's index another and other data indicate that push down e prices rose 2.5 percent over the 12 months dollar end. yeah my dollar chart probably is stalled oh no no i just need to pull, pull it over here there we go prices rose 2.8 percent thank you for pointing that out though i i totally missed that appear to remain well anchored as reflected in a broad range of you know, you've been Kyle? households businesses and forecasters as well as from measures from financial markets the median projection in the sep for total pce inflation falls to 2.4 percent this year i'm the currency guy you know yeah <laughs> next year and two percent in 2026. <clears throat> the fed's monetary policy actions are guided by our mandate hey, did we get subsides of a reprieve there prices for the american people my colleagues and i are acutely aware that high inflation imposes seems like somebody is still there selling it but that buyers are coming up to meet them for now for those least able to meet the higher cost in taking care of family business housing and transportation we are strongly committed to returning inflation to our two it's a great day to come back man <laughs> the committee this is wild i wish i was on this one man target range for the federal funds rate at five and a quarter. I was just looking at it and thinking, okay, one three oh five, that's okay. We're already up our security holdings. As labor market tightness has eased and progress on inflation has continued, the risks to achieving our employment and inflation goals are coming into better balance. <clears throat> we believe that our policy rate is likely at its peak for this tightening cycle, and that if the economy evolves broadly as expected, it will likely be appropriate to begin dialing back policy restraint. Not taking trades today. It's probably a good idea. The economic outlook is uncertain, however. This is uh, all pretty crazy action. Risks. The S&P 500 is uh, being a little bit... Like, uh, how, how high can interest rates rise here before the S&P gives it up, right? We know that reducing policy restraint too soon or too much could result in a reversal of the progress we have seen on inflation and ultimately require even tighter policy to get inflation back to 2 percent. At the same time, reducing policy restraint too late or too little could unduly weaken economic activity and employment. In considering any adjustments to the target range for the federal funds rate, the committee will carefully assess incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risks. The committee does not expect it will be appropriate to reduce the target range until it has gained greater confidence that inflation is moving sustainably down toward 2 percent. Of course, we're committed to both sides of our dual mandate, and an, un an unexpected weakening in the labor market could also warrant a policy response. We will continue to make our decisions meeting by meeting. In our SCP, FOMC participants wrote down their individual assessments of an appropriate path for the federal funds rate based on what each participant judges to be the most likely scenario going forward. If the economy evolves as projected, the median participant projects that the appropriate level of the federal funds rate will be 4.6 percent at the end of this year, 3.9 percent at the end of 2025, 
and 3.1 percent. I really just want to take a nap. What's wrong with me? Still above the medium, median longer term funds rate. These projections are not a committee decision or plan if the economy does not evolve as projected. Pretty good little recovery there now. I, I think I, you know, I said it seems like buyers are coming up to meet it. I really didn't expect it to bounce all the way back to the open when I said that. Since the committee began reducing our portfolio. I thought that they would maybe just rest there for a bit. Discussed issues related to slowing the pace of decline in our security. I'm seeing some strong buying coming into the five year, though. Decisions today on this. The general sense of the committee is that it will be appropriate to slow the pace of runoff fairly soon, consistent with the plans we previously issued. The decision to slow the pace of runoff does not mean that our balance sheet will ultimately Seemed shrink. like when he started talking about otherwise. Changing the the runoff seemed to have some impact on the market there. In particular, slowing the pace of runoff <clears> would <throat> ensure a smooth transition, reducing the possibility that money markets experience stress, and thereby facilitating the ongoing decline in our securities holdings, consistent with reaching the appropriate level. Gee, we hey, where have you been? We so everybody's coming back. All the guys that you know have kind of been missing past the month all decided to stop in today. Well, it is a Federal Reserve meeting. It's essential to set the stage for achieving maximum employment and price stability over the long. You've been doing okay, man. Uh, you know we're done. We understand that our actions are dealing with some your father and country health and so forth is in service to our public mission. I really wanted to buy the euro into the meeting today, but it's just too expensive fundamentally speaking. So I'm just going to watch the world burn. Thank <laughs> you. Well, the, the the dollar is on a ride right now, ain't it? Because they. They got hit pretty hard, came all the way back, and now the dollar is getting crushed. Um, the uh, projections show somewhat higher core inflation. They also show uh, somewhat stronger growth. Um, what should we infer from this notion that on average rates were kept the same this year, but inflation is higher and growth is higher? Does it mean uh, more? I like seeing these three guys together. And less they, they look good together. To achieve that target, that's a power powerhouse economic commentator. Doesn't, no, it doesn't mean that. What, what it means is that you know we uh, we've seen incoming uh, as you as uh, as I pointed out in my opening remarks, we did mark up our growth uh, forecast, and so have many other forecasters. So you well, I suppose I could if I wanted that four three, I could take it right there. Inflation data came in a little bit higher as a separate matter, and I think that caused people to write up uh, their their inflation. Um, but but sim trade it. Continue to make nah, I won't even sim trade it. Bringing inflation down. I'm, I'm going to be a good example and listen to what they're saying. Uh, just to follow up, when you say that you're willing to either maintain the rate for longer, is what is the tolerance of the Federal Reserve for inflation coming in above its 2% target? Uh, so we're, we're strongly committed to bringing inflation down to 2%. We're strongly committed to bringing it back to 2% goal, over time. Markets believe we will achieve that goal, and they should believe that. No, that's not. That's not true. Happen over, over. That's not true. Markets believe that you will achieve that goal. I do not believe that the markets believe that. We're, we're making projections that, that do show that happening, and we're, we're committed to that outcome, and we will bring it about. Rachel. Am I wrong? Hi, Chair Powell, Rachel Siegel from the Washington Post. I think I think people are going to pick up on that and argue that one. Have been saying that relief on housing inflation is coming, but it still hasn't shown up meaningfully in the CPI or the PCE. Does that challenge your assumption about when the shift will finally break through, since it hasn't at that point? So I think there's some confidence that that uh, that the market rents, lower market rent increases that we're seeing, will show up in measures of housing. Uh, services inflation over time. There's a little bit of uncertainty about when that will happen, but there's real confidence that they will show up eventually uh, over time. But again, uncertainty about the exact timing of that. And will you be able to get overall inflation down to target if housing doesn't break through quickly? And does that affect the timing for the eventual cuts this year? We will get aggregate inflation down to 2% over time. We will. And, and uh, I would assume that what we'll continue to see is we'll see goods prices coming into a new equilibrium where they're going down perhaps not as quickly as they had been earlier this year. Mm. Services inflation will come back down as, as, as current market rents are suggesting will happen and where non-housing services will move back down. Some combination of those three things, and it may be different from the combination we had before the pandemic, will be achieved and will bring inflation back down to 2% sustainably.
There's Nick. Nick Timoros of the Wall Street Journal. Chair Powell, during your congressional testimony this month, you said that your test for making the first change to interest rates does not require you to be terribly comfortable that inflation is at 2 percent because interest rates are well above neutral. At the same time, you said here after the last meeting that the first cut is highly consequential. Can you reconcile these views for me? If rates are well above neutral, why would the first cut be highly consequential? Is that because you anticipate one cut would be followed by one or two more along the lines of the recalibration you made in 2019, which itself was modeled on the mid-cycle adjustment of 1995? It's more, I, I would put it more in the context of what I said in, our, in my opening remarks, that the, the risks are really two-sided here. We, we're, we're in a situation where you know, if we ease uh, Nick asked ease such great questions. too much or too soon, we could see inflation come back. And if we ease too late, we could do unnecessary harm to employment and, uh, you know, people's working lives. And so, you I know. I feel like there's way more risk about doing sides. harm so to employment it's consequential. or we want, we, we want inflation to than employment because the, the employment, employment continues to be super strong. strong. With inflation coming down, we can approach that question carefully and let the data speak on that. Uh, that, that's really what I was thinking. How much of that inflation that we've seen so far this year do you chalk up to one-off calendar adjustment effects following a period of high inflation versus some change in the trend we saw uh, in the second half of last year? So I, I want to start by being saying you, I, I always try to be careful about dismissing uh, data that we don't like. So you need to <laughs> yourself on that, and I'll do that. But, so the, but the, I would say the January number, which was very high, the January CPI and PCE numbers were quite high. There's reason to think that, that there could be seasonal effects there. Um, mm. but nonetheless, we don't want to be completely dismissive of it. The February number was high, higher than expectations, but we have it at, at currently well below 30 basis points core PCE, which is not terribly high. So it's not like the January number. But I take the two of them together, and I, I think they haven't really changed the overall story, which is that of inflation moving down gradually on a sometimes bumpy road toward 2 percent. I don't think that story has changed. Um, I also don't think that those, those readings added to anyone's confidence that we're moving closer to. Still to at work at 7.43 p.m. here. Wow. 14 hours straight. You're crazy. You need a new job. Excessively celebrate. The I, shouldn't, I shouldn't say things like that. In the last seven months of That's last year. Crazy. We didn't um, take too much signal out of that. What you heard us saying was that we needed to see more that we could, you know, we want. Bond market will lower the interest rate for them, and of course, as well they will have to think the same. Or are we going to ignore them? It sure, it sure does feel like that the market doesn't think that they're going to, Hi, yes, Chair Powell. you know, uh, I, um, do anything to make conditions uh, stricter. Timing, uh, is there um, enough data uh, between now and, say, May to be able to get the kind of confidence that you say that you know, you still need, um, or by June, um, is there enough data for you? Just give us a sense of your thinking there. Thank you. So I kind of see a key spot at 12. By meeting, and we didn't make any decisions or <sighs> about future meetings today. I hope my yawning isn't Those too contagious. Our ongoing assessment of, of the incoming data, the evolving outlook, and the balance of risk. So I've, I really don't have anything for you on any specific mm. meeting. Looking forward. But, I mean, just a question of, I mean, is there even enough data for you to be able to? We'll, we'll take, um, Sorry. you know, th things <laughs> happen during an intermeeting period, if you look back, unexpected things. So I don't want to, I wouldn't want to dismiss anything. So I just would say that the committee wants to see um, more data that gives us higher confidence that inflation is moving down sustainably uh, uh, 2%. She didn't right, ask so a very good question, did she? Uh, and we don't see this in, in the data right now, but if there were a significant weakening in the data, particularly in the labor market, that could also be a reason for us to, to begin the process of reducing rates. Again, I don't, there's nothing in the data pointing at that, but those are the things that we'll be looking at at coming meetings and it, without, without trying to refer to any specific meeting. Hi, uh, Chris Regaver at Associated Press. Thank you. Um, in the projections, there is an increase in the neutral rate, as you know, and uh, higher rates, a quarter point higher rates projected in 2025, 2026. 20, um, can you speak about what might be behind that? Is there a real sense here that the economy has perhaps changed in some way that uh, higher rates will be needed in the future? Thank you. 
so you're right. They're pretty modest changes, but you're right. There was an uptick in the, in the longer run rate, and um, uh, and also there's a 25 basis point increase in, in 25 and 26. In terms of um, are rates going to be higher in the in the longer run? If that's really your question, I, I don't think we know that. Um, I, I think uh, it's it's we think. I'm I'm really struggling to stay awake here for whatever reason. I'm I'm into it. Financial crisis era for for reasons that are mostly maybe I'm not. You know, these, some of these questions are kind of like mm. important, slow moving, large things like demographics and productivity. And, and I'm going to fall asleep. He's going to say something crazy and the stock market's just going to take out. Well, the market did break a new high. I think would be that rates will not go back down to the very low levels that we saw where all around the world there were long run rates that were at or below zero. Uh, in hey, cases. thanks for stopping by, Jiwi. Rates going back down to that level, but I think there's tremendous uncertainty around that. It, it really feels to me like the stock market is like, unless he comes out and is like fire and brimstone, they're rallying, you know? Look at the dollars just getting crushed here. <laughs> the last press conference, you sounded pretty optimistic. You would get more confidence. Gold taking new highs. It, is it right to say that this suggests you're not seeing a lot of disinflation this year compared to what we've seen 2023 and so, so forth? I think that that, that higher year-end um, number reflects the data. What, what I'm seeing right now, now stock market up, year, so. treasuries up, dollar down, is not a vote of confidence so in say, say you're less the Federal Reserve's ability to keep inflation down. Uh, get the confidence you need this year. I, I you know... I, I think if you look at if you look at the SCP, what it says is that um, it is still likely in 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 most people's. Well, they did touch by twelve. That we will achieve that. Yeah. that there will be rate cuts, but that's really going to depend on the on the incoming day. I was kind of thinking about taking a trade there, even the but is, that's already the turned. And the year you have some. I'm still a little bit worried about what's going on here, especially with the dollar whipping around as much as it has. Forward. Nonetheless, um, we're looking for data that confirm the kind of low readings that we had last year uh, and, and give us a, a higher degree of confidence that what we saw was really inflation moving sustainably down to 2 percent, toward 2 percent. Stop yawning, man. I'm sorry. Sometimes in the, the afternoon, I just get sleepy. That a weakening in the labor market would be a reason to potentially cut rates or at least a consideration in making a rate cut. Would continued strength in the labor market be a reason to hold off on rate cuts? And just in general, if labor supply continued to rebound in 2024 the way it did in 2023, what would stronger hiring and possibly stronger growth mean for the path forward on policy? Yeah, so mm. if, we're, if what we're getting is... Um, a lot of supply and a lot of demand, and that supply is actually feeding demand because workers are getting paid and they're spending. Yeah. That's, you know, you, you, what you would have is potential. Oh, supply side. Did he just endorse supply side economics? Your economy, where inf where inflationary pressures are not increasing. In fact, they were decreasing. So you can have that if you have the continued supply side uh, act activity that we had last year with uh, both with um, supply chains and also with with uh, growth in the size of the labor force. Hmm. So strong hiring in and of itself would not be a reason to hold off on rate cuts. No, not, not all by itself. No, I mean we, we saw you, you saw last year very strong hiring, hiring and inflation coming down quickly. We now have a better sense that a big part of that was supply side healing, particularly with with um, growth in the labor force. So, in and of itself, strong job growth, growth is not a reason. Uh, you know, I saw an article. To be saying that since it's the election year, the Fed could postpone rate cuts by next year so it doesn't get accused of influencing the polls? Uh, yeah, and then he, he would reject that. But, uh, like, the market sure seems to be trading like that's what they think is happening. In particular, do you uh, view the kind of easing in financial conditions since the fall as consistent and compatible with what you're trying to achieve on the inflation mandate? So we think <laughs> there are many different financial conditions indicators, and you can kind of, uh, you know, see different answers to that question. But... Ultimately, we do think that um, financial conditions are, are weighing on economic activity, and we think you see that in a great place to see it is in the labor market, where you've seen demand um, cooling off a little bit from the extremely high levels. And there I would point to job openings, quits, surveys, uh, the, 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 um, 
the hiring rate, things like that are really demand. There are also supply side things happening, but I think those are demand side things happening. Um, you know, we saw, that's been a question for a while. We did see progress on inflation last year, uh, significant progress uh, despite, uh, you know, financial conditions sometimes being tighter, sometimes looser. Michael McGee with uh, <coughs> Bloomberg Radio and Television. Can you give us uh, more color uh, on how the committee is thinking about inflation dynamics now? Uh, what we've seen at the beginning of the year, are they more one-off increases that will fade, or is there more of a secular turn uh, with goods prices rising again and service prices staying sticky? And also, housing prices have been sort of the Godot of this uh, cycle in that you keep expecting them to go down and they don't. Uh, how does the committee see this playing out forward since you've raised your uh, inflation forecast? So I, I see the committees looking at, at the two months of data and asking the same question you're asking and saying we're just going to have to see what the data show. Uh, as I mentioned, you can look at January, uh -huh. which is very high reading, and you can, and I think many advise, many people did. See, it's, it's like he's trying to say nothing. Possibility of seasonal adjustment problems there. But again, you don't want to. Is the market efficiency? No, the market is not efficient. You know, like so. Uh, yeah. um, then February. It's very we'll statistically efficient, but not informationally so efficient. The question is, what are we Current prices are now reflective of all information. Stronger, this is in the data, a little bit stronger inflation in the first half of the year. A little bit less. Yeah, big old order at twelve half. We're going to let the data um, show. I don't. I don't think we really know whether this is a bump on the road or something more. We'll have to find out. No, I don't mean that markets are random. The is strong. The labor market is strong. Uh, inflation has come way down. I mean, random is kind of a loaded word because that means that, like, and and uh, to some people that means that the movements in the market down sustainably at two percent. Uh, when we take that step, have that. no real rhyme or nothing behind them. The desire to have confidence. I'm I'm saying you know every every move in the market is based on market participants making moves. I'm just saying that those moves are not necessarily reflective of all available information. Conference, but confidence. But I would say that the the um, the market tries to reflect all available information, but it it can't. the same, and that and that is of. Inflation coming down gradually toward 2% on a sometimes bumpy path, as I mentioned. I Lock think by. I just want to give in and go to sleep. Ugh. Months of 2.5%. Lock by, huh? Um, it's kind of a ceiling there at 13 for some reason. A big old stack at 12 half now. We consistently said Let's recenter this. And the question is, are they more than bumps? And we just don't, we can't know that. Yeah, there's a lot of randomness, but there are stylized behaviors. Yes, there are stylized behaviors. Very important for everyone that we serve that but we the key the key thing is is that sustainably the and price is not necessarily reflective of all information situation is different but the there can be knowledge of future flows question carefully that you know you're going to start going to come and the market not priced it and it happens all the time again perhaps if you if you cut inappropriately prematurely Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Edward Lawrence uh, with Fox Business. Um, I wanted to ask you, uh, you received a, a letter from, um, well, the Federal Reserve is an independent body, understanding Congress has oversight over that. You received a letter from Senators Elizabeth Warren and Sheldon Whitehouse. Chaotic means they are behaviors that look random, but they behave like a phenomenon which can be standardized. Says, quote, the potential that it may remain too high. I have to make some friends on Congress? Well, yeah, that would help for sure. Technologies and delayed significant so I'm not even talking about insider versus out outsider so information. Higher interest rates uh, cause that. There is always a symmetry in the market, in, in knowledge. Respect, uh, you know, we, That's in our system, why the market Congress exists, that has oversight right? Responsibility if if the that didn't happen, a tremendous amount of uh, on our all you Congress would be left with, with is great the structural uh, in, in this case, inequalities uh, in the markets, our mandate, right? Our mandate is like employment not being able to trade your informational advantage on the market to accomplish at all we're trying to do that would just be sustained oppression, growth right? It would just be us sitting and watching the rich guys make money all the time and not being able to do anything to compete. Because how can we compete? 
and leave when we know something that the market's not factoring in are incredibly important such as those you mentioned leave those to the people but there can be information that is public there can be information that we all know and it still not be reflected correctly in asset prices and it happens all the time are doing policy wise we, we, we receive these respect and why is that that's because the orders are what drives the markets and not actually the information again because we're talking to the people who in our system of government have oversight over our activity so that's but but at the, at the end of the day we take that on board but we have to make our judgments and we have to see is an ant moving on the floor random stability it look like it supervise and regulate the bank is the ant hive random not at all but they are chaotic yeah this is definitely a chaotic system because basically every order comes in and has an impact and those that impact is strong and so what you re, you're left with is a is a system that is extremely difficult to analyze would you want to see unanimity on the committee or something close to it meaning no more than one dissent before you begin cutting rates thank you I, I th we're a very consensus oriented uh, organization and we do try to achieve con uh, consensus and and ideally unanimity people do dissent it's something that happens life goes on and it's not a problem we've always had dissents uh, but and so I you know and you you, you respect thoughtful dissents very much um, it's like you, you may not agree with with some arguments but you really want to understand them so you may read a book that takes a position that you, that you have long opposed this uh, this kind of reversal sense with back up here in the treasuries um, doesn't seem to be letting up there is a decent amount of tr volume trading there at 14 that could slow them down. The driver in this instance appears to be primarily the dollar continuing to weaken back below 103. Uh, unemployment, though, if you look at the projection for the full year, 4.0%. Uh, in February, uh, we were already at 3.9%, so quite close to the median projection. Are you concerned at all that notwithstanding the very strong jobs growth, um, that in fact there may be some cracks appearing in the employment market? Uh, you talked about a significant... I probably just need to take like a quick 15-second nap. Rates. I'll be fine. What would constitute uh, that in your books? Thank you. So uh, we, of course, monitor the, it's one of our two goal variables. We, we all monitor the it's labor because market. it's warmer in here. I, I don't see those cracks today. I, don't, I haven't we had, had as much time for the room to cool off. That are out there about, about there being cracks. But uh, the, the overall picture really is strong labor market, the extreme imbalance. Some with people coming market. into the market like a doctor is that they are used to analyzing ordered systems. They try to read the market like that, but they are chaotic. High job growth. You're seeing yeah, well, and there's just a lot of information out there that's just objectively growth is correct, incorrect about how the market actually behaves. Uh, in many, many respects. And even the information that is correct, the retail traders more to the misinterpret it or misapply it. Which we can think of as like momentum is a real strategy that works, but the way that retail traders think that momentum work is not the way the strategy works at all. On this, you know, how tight is the how easy is it to find a job? How hard is how easy it is to find a worker? Those have both those surveys have both come down. So the labor market's in it's in good shape. Um, you know. Uh, you do see things like the low, uh, the low hiring rate, and people have made the argument that if if um, if layoffs were to increase, uh, that that would that would mean that the net would be fairly quick increases in unemployment. So that's something we're watching, but we're not seeing it. Of course, um, initial claims are are very very low, and if anything, have tracked tracked down a little bit. So, watching it carefully, don't see it. And when I say uh, something, I, I, I use the term unexpected weakening in the labor market. So, you know, uh, we do expect the unemployment rate to, uh, you know, the forecast is that it would move up, I think, closer to what we see as the longer run sustainable level. That's just a, that's just people's forecast, individual forecasts. But um, we're talking about something that's unexpected. That's, that's where I'll leave it, though. And would Steve already get a question? Steve Matthews with Bloomberg. Oh, Steve Matthews. Uh, you oh. mentioned at the beginning of the press conference that it, that the committee felt it might be appropriate <laughs> to slow the pace of asset runoff fairly soon. I'm wondering, is when you say fairly soon, does that mean that the committee would 
uh, meet about this again in May, and a decision could be reached that soon. And I was wondering if you could also just describe the, the scope of what the committee is discussing here. You're at $95 billion of, of uh, uh, caps right now. Would that be cut about in half or something in that nature? Thank you. Um, so that is what we're discussing, essentially, is, is um, and we're not discussing all the other, many other balance sheet issues. We will discuss those in, the, in due course, but what we're really looking at is, is uh, slowing the pace of runoff. There isn't much runoff among MBS, in MBS right now, but there is in Treasuries, and we're talking about going to a lower pace. I don't want to give you a specific number because we haven't, made a, uh, haven't made, had an agreement or a decision, but that's, that's the idea. Um, and uh, that's what we're looking at. And, and the, in terms of the timing, I said fairly soon. I wouldn't want to try to be more specific than that, but you get the idea. Um, the, the idea is, and this is in our, in our longer run plans, that we may actually be able to get to a lower level because we would avoid the kind of frictions that can, can happen. It, liquidity is not evenly distributed in the system. And there can be times when, in the aggregate, reserves are, are ample. Let's see here. On many occasions, it would appear insiders are acquiring information ahead of releases, and that's a clear form of mistrust in addition to what already exists. And then it would be very hard Maybe. to start, we think. So, I mean, how can we really know? In 19, perhaps. So, so that's the thing, is that so that's what we're doing. We're looking at all we're, orders have impact, structure, regardless of what the motivation behind them are. Fairly soon. So, uh, if we don't know why it's trading, balance sheet at how can we judge that it's insider trading or not? We can only guess. Goal. Is we can be suspicious, but can you prove that that's what it was? A balance sheet that is mostly treasuries. I do expect that once we're through this, um, we'll we'll come back. I to I think the though that composition the you know there's this expectation. But it's among right average now. people that the stock market is supposed to be this equal playing field when the time and that's nonsense the other issues the, the the market exists precisely because Hi, it, there it, there is not an equal also playing field um, some people have information that other people don't and they want to be able to come to the market and be able to profit on that information that they have that they trade on that information and then that disseminates it to the rest of the market. Soon enough. And that's how we're able to actually make transactions and, and actually have price discovery, right? If there was some way to just know what the price should be, then we would just know what the price is and, and we would calculate it. And um, if, if we really made it so that like everybody had to be equal. a lot of attention to Everything had to be equal. To happen and, and that the, foreshadowed the market wouldn't work. At, at the end of that tightening cycle. It's just like if you know, if I know something that they don't, like it has to be listed on this news squawk stream that everybody has that day. And then I have a piece of information that's not included on that and I'm trading off of it. Even though it's public information, but I'm not allowed to trade off of it. You can't have a real market at that point anymore because there's no reason for the informed traders to trade. For similar signs though. Well, is it also and then at that point, sure it's exactly just market making and gambling. Once the overnight reverse repo and and what happens in that situation is the person with the biggest bankroll wins. That once the so that's not a market. That's that's called oppression. Right. That's that would be the 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 fake market that everybody talks you know thinks that we live in, where you know you're given an illusion of competition, but there really isn't. You know, it's all rigged in favor of one particular group. Hi, Chair right? General Gene Young with m and Market News. The, the market is rigged in favor of it. It's in, rigged in favor of the people that are informed. Well, well you, uh, you said that starting the taper sooner could get, to, get you to a smaller balance sheet size. Um, does that mean you don't have to make a decision on when to end QT at this point? And, and um, will you be setting up um, the process for deciding that? sooner or, or will you wait until we're close to the end? So uh, it's sort of ironic that by going slower, you can get farther. Give him a donation so the donation chain moikes him up. Um, well, getting getting me a little bit excited about, you won't, you'll run much you know, less what is insider trading and what's uh, not and so forth, that woke me up a little bit. 
which can grow into shocks and which can cause you to stop the process. It usually takes just like a, a little micro nap and then the chemicals all even themselves back out and I'm like wide awake. Carefully. It's like saying Nancy Pelosi is a good stock pick. Okay, so, so I have no problem with Nancy Pelosi being able to use information provided by her position to be able to make money in the stock market. There isn't a what I am not okay with or a percent of is or anything like that where we, we, Nancy we Pelosi really taking positions that we're going to be in stocks and things that she has direct know, control over the outcome of uh, that she knows she she gets to decide what comes up for a vote and what doesn't she she gets to whip ultimately you know what's going to pass and what's not going to pass allowing the balance sheet to run and so it's a conflict of interest is what it is point, there's another period in which non-reserves li non-reserve liabilities grow organically like currency and that also mm -hmm. shrinks the, the the problem with congress is is a conflict of interest slower pace how can congressmen uh, do what is in our the public's best interest then you have when they're more concerned about how they can make more money on the stock market that's not okay and allow non-reserve okay. abilities to but asymmetry of information is a necessary part of the market now that doesn't mean that we can't have limitations on it for instance like what we have with um a company's earnings that's a really critical piece of information like honestly if you were allowed to trade insider information then basically only company insiders would ever be able to make money from the market so of course we come in and we say you, you know there's releases for that and before it's released that's information that doesn't belong to you and you can't trade off of it i think that that's a good law but there will always be some form of informational asymmetry out there Hi, Nancy Marshall Genser with Marketplace. That's what moves. I, I, let's not say that's what moves markets in the first place, because if I'm going to say what moves markets, it's people trading. Can you just and that trading could be based off of asymmetrical information, but it could be based off of a bunch of other things too. Right? So we're, most importantly, we're looking. But it is why the market exists. And the contents of it. If the informational asymmetry didn't exist, we wouldn't have the need to come in and have a market. We would just know what the price is supposed to be and use that price toward 2%. Uh, and I mean, it, it, of course, we'll also be looking at all the other things that are happening in the economy. We'll look at the totality of I have no issue if they required the info from their own research. Well, why does it matter if they got it from most important thing will be their government position or their position at a company or their expertise? So uh, let me give you a better example. You know, if I'm trading wheat futures and I'm a farmer, I know how much uh, crop I planted. I know how my crops are doing. I know like all of the things involved. That gives me a huge advantage. That is essentially insider information. I know something about the supply of that commodity that other people don't. So if I trade on that, is that insider in trading? That would be nonsense. Inflation was not. You wouldn't be able to have a wheat market at that point anymore because none of the suppliers would be able to participate in it, and that's the whole reason why the market exists is so that the suppliers can hedge. Two percent sustainably. We'd like to see, you know, continuing gradual movement of wage. So why does the source of the information matter? Levels, but back down to. I don't think it does. Sustainable over time. I, I think that what would matter would be like the degree of advantage at which it gives them. Thank you, uh, Greg Robb from Market Watch. Chair Powell. I'm not sure if the degree of advantage that uh, the information gives Congress is a problem. But what is a problem is it's a conflict of interest. I think that's really important. Was there that sense of because maybe it's a if you to wait. just do it based off of I guess I put it you know way. there's informational asymmetry here. Then I, I'll tell you what's going to happen. Look at I'll tell you what's going to happen. Is they're going to go in there and implement the law so that congressmen can't buy and hold stocks. And what they will do is they will just go and give tips to other people instead. We were right. Well, whoever is willing to pay the most, we're more confident. I'll I'll give you stock tips. I'll tell you what's going on in my committee. I'll give you the inside scoop, and you can trade on it, and then you give me some sort of feedback. So I think, generally speaking, does it solve the problem? You haven't actually solved the problem. Then at that point, have you? It's appropriate for us to be careful because Congress still has a conflict of interest. They're still going to want certain things to play out in a certain way 
not because it's what's best for the country, but because that's what's going to make them the most money. It's a conflict of interest and it shouldn't be allowed. I've been hearing a lot from Republicans in Congress about what the Fed is or isn't doing in a digital dollar. Um, but folk, I know you have said to Congress that you are going to wait for approval before the Fed does anything, uh, launches anything. But folks like House Majority Whip Tom Emmer have said that the Fed is either actively researching or hiring personnel to study the But they, they the are actively researching and hiring personnel about it, though. Is doing right now on a digital dollar. Sure. So I think we've been pretty transparent on this, but and they have been tr pretty transparent on it. I agree. Um, so that was a weird question. Who we, was that guy? We are not getting ready to. Pro we haven't proposed. We haven't come to a conclusion that we should propose, or anything like that. A, th that Congress consider legislation to authorize a digital dollar. And it would take no secret can be kept forever as well if some company is giving earnings info to someone without releasing it to the public and we find out it would be catastrophic for the company with with the public of it so so we're just a long long way from that what we are doing and i think what every major central bank is doing is we're, we're trying to stay in the frontiers of what's going on in digital finance and it has many many different uh areas you know that it, they're researching they're not have any plans that they're not like they're trying to make it happen and so we need we to serve the public we need we're, these these issues have become very front burner in the last five or six i'm years. i'm very passionate about, about this issue about all that. for so for two reasons trying to okay. understand number one is, is from the perspective of us traders cbdc people make this assumption that me knowing somebody thing that other people don't know is unfair in my own mind and and so people will basically not pursue the best strategies you know i just think it's because it, it's really all down to asymmetrical information and and yes you can find asymmetrical information that is public that is like out there on the internet for everybody to see and it's just that not everybody's looking at it because they're so enamored with what the price is and what the price is doing right now that they just ignore that information. Right. Mr. Right. Chairman, April 27th will mark... The second reason is because it kind of allows Congress to continue to play these games and, and do things that are not in our best interest. The reason it's a problem is because it's a conflict of interest. The reason that we have the problems that we do in Congress today is because of the conflicts of interest. I, I generally think and until the average American understands started, you know, the conflicts of interest more, and seeks to hold their representatives' feet to the fire, uh, so that their interests are aligned with that of the American people and not their not the Congressperson's own monetary incentives, nothing's going to change. And and so it all happens that way. And so there's been a march toward greater and greater transparency. And um, that certainly Chairman Bernanke advanced that. So Chairman Greenspan did, uh, Chair Yellen did. And I, you know, so we went. And they can't forbid. I, I, they, they can't forbid all informational asymmetry. They have one specific category that I totally agree with, which is like company earnings and stuff. A bunch of other things. Uh, you know, we we have an annual. Uh, it doesn't really apply to us in the futures market, though, does it? Um, economic, I, I mean, economic releases as well. If you were releasing information to the public before the economic release, that would be a crime. Desperately in need of doing at this moment. We're very transparent. We have no shortage of FOMC participants speaking to the public through the media, and so that that channel is full. I would say. Um, so I think I think it's generally broadly helped and made things better, but not every day and in every way. Well, to follow up, has there ever been a day where you wanted to put that genie back in the bottle somewhat? Of course not. <laughs> of course not. <laughs> that was that was like a top ten moment right there. <laughs> that was the best of Jerome Powell right there, man. Oh, we should be compiling that because I don't know if he'll be around for much longer. Hasn't raised anyone's confidence. But when you testified before the Senate a couple weeks ago, you told lawmakers that you are. I should be not taking better notes of this meeting. It's needed on inflation to begin cutting rates. So, are you still of that belief or not? What are we to take by those words? Not far. So let me say my, my main message at that um, uh, in those two days of hearings was really that the, com the committee needs to see more evidence to build our confidence that inflation 
is moving down sustainably toward our 2% goal, and we don't expect that it will be appropriate to begin to reduce rates until we're more confident than that is the case. I, that, that is the case. I said that any number of times, so those were kind of the main part of the message. We repeated that today uh, in our statement. I also, to the Where left, at, by the way, I, I, I really eights. pointed out that we had made significant progress over the past year, and what we're looking for now is confirmation that that progress will continue. Um, uh, we had a series of, inf of um, inflation readings over the second half of last year that were, that were really uh, much lower. Uh, we didn't overreact, as I mentioned, but that, that's what I had in mind. But given that you said that PCE for February 2.8 percent, the estimate, and that we have been seeing PCE, core PCE, coming down by 10 percent every month, I mean, wouldn't you be at about 2.4 percent this summer, June, July, to a point where you could cut then? Well, you know, we'll just have to see how the data, uh, how the data come in. Um, we would, of course, love to get great inflation data. We got really good inflation data on the second in the second part of last year. Again, we didn't overreact to it. We said we needed to see more, and uh, we said it would be bumpy. And now we have January and February, which I've talked about a couple of times. So, you know, we're looking for for more good data, and we would certainly welcome it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, man, I still feel awfully sleepy. <laughs> that was slightly short meeting by about 10 minutes. But you know what? Uh, I, I kind of felt like, you know, the press wanted to get something out of him and they had kind of given up on that and were just kind of having fun at that point. And it just wasn't, you know... There was kind of this acknowledgement, I guess, from everybody involved that this particular Fed meeting is not that important. Next one is probably more important and then July, June, July, whatever could be really important because that might be when they actually cut rates. And that, of course, means that the next upcoming slate of data coming in April and May is going to be super important. And the way the market moved is very curious. Let's come back over to the chart here. So you can see here in the 10 year, we had this huge spike that was extremely short lived. They sold it down, which I think that that made sense, but then kind of came back. I'd say maybe slightly positive. So why is that? Why slightly positive? Well, then if you come back over here and you look at the 30 year, the 30 year, it came back and it's slightly under where it was. So uh, I think that, you know, for the the short end of the curve, that this should be like a, you know, maybe slightly positive, if not a, you know, non-consequential move. But in the 30 year, because the dot plots and everything had the rates staying higher for longer, you should see selling in the 30 year. And so, so what really happened here what the the big thing to note really note this time is that the yield curve steepened there was a considerable amount of steepening on the 30 year end of the curve and the rest you know the the changes in the overall rates was just kind of what needed to happen in order to accommodate that change in the curve also the dollar is weak. Uh, this was about the point when the treasuries were at their lows. Look at how far the dollar fell after that. Wowzer. I tell you what, currency moves can be some of the most confusing and difficult to predict. But I, I, I really don't think that this this is, is very good for the overall outlook. Let's say for like confidence in the Fed's ability to control inflation. Because if I come back over here to the charts again and I see gold, gold moved up and kept moving up. And remember earlier this morning, we said that the, the treasuries may not be as sensitive to the changes as other instruments might be in that you might want to trade it in gold. Well, that definitely turned out because, man, gold was the play 
and the treasury is kind of just sort of a little bit up. So that's pretty curious. Session's not over. S&P 500 has rallied pretty pretty decently. Uh, like, what, what was it? Good 20, maybe 30 points, depending on where you draw the line from. Oh, actually, maybe you could even say 40 points. Wait, what is that in a percent? Let's look at it more from a percentage basis. Let's see here. Silver's up 2.71%. ES is up 0 0.81, 0 0.82. That's not bad. Spoo is all, is that an all-time high? Could be. I don't know if that really matters. Where is it? Yeah, it is all-time high. Da -da -da -da. Oh, maybe some of that movement was a stop run. But I, I don't know. Well, maybe that does change things. Maybe that does change things. I'm I'm a little bit I'm a little bit weary about uh, they're gonna do some profit taking and they're gonna give some of that back. You know what I mean? But I, I would say overall our our kind of take on the treasury was that you know a hawkish surprise might not affect the treasuries as much as it normally should. I think I think that that was the case. And gold moving higher says to me that the market's not letting go of its concerns that inflation could come back and become a problem. I think the market is very much still concerned about that. But what they have given up on is they've given up on the Federal Reserve doing anything about it before it happens. <laughs> So, again, I don't think that it's a vote of confidence in the monetary policy. I think that what happened here today is, is kind of a little sad. Now, where do we go from here? Well, in the treasuries, I think that we might get a lot of back and forth which could actually be good for us, you know, if we have good predictors of order flow. Some of the kind of the more gentle and and silly ones like the end of month movement and that sort of a thing might help us more in the near future. So that actually is kind of good. But what happened today? Um, there was no change in interest rates and Jerome Powell talked a lot and didn't really say a whole lot. And the S&P 500 rallied because of it. That's what happened. <laughs> Bow flex. <laughs> I haven't seen that emoji before. Is that is that an alien hiding behind a hand, or is that a Pepe? Is that a Pepe? I can't tell what that's what that that emoji is supposed to be. Kind of looks like maybe it's a tiny Pepe, but I can't tell. Do you trade oil? No, I know I do not actually. Oil scares the hell out of me. <laughs> Technical term, the hell. That's actually like a thing. It's been scared out of me. It's not in me anymore. Don't have to deal with it. One of the better things to have happened to me actually was having the hell scared out of me. But 
uh, dude, I, I, if I one of the first videos that I posted on this channel, like, you know, we always had like the daily streams and everything. Like that's how this all started was just a, a daily trade log. But then at some point I came in and I said, I should make YouTube videos too. And the first YouTube video that I made was an explanation of the different instruments. And so I talk about kind of like describing their personalities as, as women that you're dating. And I always said that like oil is like the Courtney love of the, the, uh, the CME oil is like the Courtney love of the Chicago mercantile exchange. Okay. She's, she's the girl that you start dating her. She, you know, you think everything's great. She thinks you're so smart and everything's so wonderful. And then all of a sudden one day she just slashed your tires and destroyed all your stuff. Or like you seen that, that, uh, um, oh my gosh, that UKF music video. <laughs> you guys never listened to drum and bass. You might have no clue what I'm talking about. UKF drum and bass, I think it is. And then if you go to videos and you look at their most popular video. No, it's not this one. It's just their UKF UKF channel. I think they have like a straight UKF. There we go. Yeah, that one. Oh, was it not up there anymore? Well, I can't remember who it was anymore. There's this. There's this one video where like this guy he comes in and there's like a they they get a videotape and he stops starts watching the videotape and it's a video of his of his girlfriend like breaking up with him. And then in the video, she like cheats on him with a guy and is like twirling the condom in her hand. And then she throws it into an oven and then sets the oven on fire and sets his house on fire. And he's all watching this and like, oh, dude, we got to go to our, our, to our house now. She's like that. She's like that. Oil. Be careful with oil, man. Unless you really know your thing. Unless you, you've been in the oil industry, you really know the oil market. The oil market will wreck you. She's vengeful. She's vengeful. Oh man, I wish I wish I could rem it was always like the top performing video on UKF. That's how I knew what it was. And it's not there anymore. Unless it was like UKF dubstep or something. I want to say it was a sub focus music video, but I could be wrong. Well, now I'm never going to find it again. <laughs> I'm probably never going to find it again. That's funny. Ugh. Thought it was a UKF. Forget I mentioned it. Forget I mentioned it. CL and NQ are my favorite. You're crazy. You're crazy. Alan. I thought I knew you. I thought... <laughs> no, I, I did know that you like CL and N NQ though, didn't, didn't we? Yeah, you've definitely brought that up many times before. <laughs> that That is, I'm telling you, they both will wreck you. They will both wreck you for sure. Okay, well, guys, I should get going. I'm seeing some messages at work. It's lunch is over. There, there's some stuff that's going on. So I will get back to it tomorrow. I think we could have some interesting trades. I'll see you guys then. In the meantime, stay excellent, team.